Hey everybody, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. This is Kana, and you're in my corner, and I have a very special guest in the corner as well. And actually, this is the first guest of the week. This would be Mr. Bruce Elliott. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be with you. And I'm actually very excited to talk with you because not only are you a voice actor, but I believe you have a lot of stage experience as well. Uh, yes, actually quite a bit. For, for an awfully long time, I really only thought of myself as a stage actor. I've been doing it since, since high school, really, and seriously since college. And I've been a member of the, the Professional Actors Union, Actors' Equity, for, gosh, just over 30 years. I guess that kind of gives you an idea that I'm not a spring chicken. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, with the, the experience and with the, the time you've been doing it, that probably helps your performances not only in, on stage but in anime as well, correct? Well, I would like to think so. Yeah, I've certainly, uh, I've certainly done lots of different kinds of roles and different kinds of plays over the years, and I would like to think that that, that kind of variety, uh, which I really love, you know, drama, comedy, musicals, basically you name it. Uh, it didn't hurt me any when I started uh, doing anime voices. Now, I'm curious, is there anything that you know now that you would have liked to know back then when you started? <laughs> oh, gee, that's an interesting question. Um, I don't know that I've got a good answer for that. I, I think I've probably learned a lot uh, since I've since I've been doing anime, which has been probably about eight years now, I guess, something like that. Uh, and I'm certainly more comfortable with the with the procedures and and being in the booth and how it works. But uh, I, I I felt pretty good about uh, about jumping into it. it what, what's a little different about doing? Uh, anime voices than being on stage is that you don't get a chance to uh, to look at the material ahead of time. On stage, of course, <laughs> ideally they want you to memorize it before you go on in a performance, um, and the, you know, of course that's not an option in anime. You get the you get the script the day that you show up, uh, and so it's pretty cold uh, in the in the in uh, as in a cold reading, not not like emotionally cold. <laughs> no, uh, I, I understand. And I'm curious, could you tell us about your very first time in the booth? Well, let me see if I can remember back that far. Um, <laughs> I will tell you, I was I I have an agent in Dallas, and I was sent on the original audition by my agency. Uh, out to Funimation's former headquarters, which was in the, the Frost Bank building out in uh, North Richland Hills, which is on the uh, a northeastern suburb of Fort Worth. Uh, they're, they're now in Flower Mound, which is more, more between the cities, uh, north of the DFW Airport, which is almost exactly between Dallas and Fort Worth. Um, uh, you know, actually, I think the very first, I think I missed my very first scheduled session because I was sick, yeah, I had, I had kind of an inauspicious beginning to my Funimation career because uh, I had the flu or something pretty awful for for several days, and I actually missed uh, at least the first scheduled session. And in fact, I believe the first time I actually went in when we had rescheduled that original session, as I recall, I really wasn't ready, and I had to go home. So, Aww. as I say, yeah, a very inauspicious beginning. But once once we got going, I uh, it, it was fine, and I think they were they were happy that they put up with a sick old me for the first couple of sessions there. Oh well, that's a good thing, and it's obviously you know you've been with Funimation for for quite a while as uh, one of their voice actors per se. Right, right. Now, now I do some some other voice work uh, around town, but but. Uh, but Funimation has certainly been my primary uh, voice employer over the last uh, decade. Now, if I rec recall correctly, you also got to ADR direct with them as well. I did. Um, I expressed an interest in it uh, uh, several years back, uh, and that finally came to fruition, I guess now it's been a couple of years ago. 
uh, when Funimation, um, it had been in the works for quite some time, but they finally got the rights to the Gonzo version of Romeo and Juliet. And, uh, and another voice actor and I, Michael Tatum and I, co-directed that show under the auspices of Chris Bevins, who was one of my first directors at Funimation and was uh, at that point a line producer at Funimation. So he was kind of the boss, at, at, but Michael and I actually did the ADR directing. He'd had a little experience of, of it at that point, and I had not. So uh, for the first, oh, I don't know, two or three weeks, I, I mostly sat in on his sessions and, and uh, you know, dropped a suggestion here and there, but I was there mostly to learn. And then jumped right in and had a great time uh, directing Romeo and Juliet, which turned out to be a really terrific show. I'm, I'm very proud of that show and really happy with the way it turned out. Of course, it was a pretty great show to begin with. Could you explain to me some of the challenges uh, with uh, directing versus, you know, voice acting? Well, um, it's a different ball game to be sure. You got to, you really got to be on top of things uh, a little more. You have to be. I mean, you can walk in as, as a voice actor, and you may know the the character you're playing, especially if it's one you've played before. But as a as an ADR director. You really have to know all the characters and everything that's going on uh, in, in any given session, depending on whether you're working with a major character or maybe a more minor character. You may work on just one episode or you may work, I think in our case, we mostly did our contracts, uh, which is the way they set it out, would generally be, I'd direct, I think on Romeo and Juliet, I would direct four episodes. And then Michael would step back in and direct the next four episodes, and we swapped off by, like that through the end of the series. So you really got to know what's what's going on in the show, what's about to happen to whom, um, and you've got to be able to uh, to be aware of things that are maybe that just happened to the character or that are about to happen to the character that may be referred to somehow in the dialogue that may not be immediately evident to the actor. Uh, so there are times when the actor will give a read that might be just fine, but in light of what you know is coming or something that just happened, you know, you may have to tweak them a little bit, say, you know, we need a little bit more emotion here, or this is really a, a very tense moment for this actor, and he's not really showing it overtly, but, but we need to hear it in the voice. It's that sort of thing. So you you got to have your uh, got to have your game on. When you're uh, when you're directing, there's no question. Oh, definitely. And I, <laughs> and I think it it took me a while to get into that. I got to say, I was I was I would, would certainly have to say I was a little clumsy at very best uh, when I first started directing. But I I think I got into the swing of it pretty well. And as I say, I'm really really happy with how Romeo and Juliet turned out. And a lot most most people seem to be pretty happy with that. We got a lot of nice strokes in the press and and online and from anime fans for that show and. And uh, the feedback I got from my Funimation folks, and certainly from our producer, Chris, uh, was all very, very positive. That's awesome. Do you think you'll do any more directing in the future? Well, I certainly hope so. I've done a little bit uh, since then. I, I worked uh, one contract, four episodes of a show called Big Wind Up, which was about a high school baseball team in Japan. Uh, and I directed four of those episodes. And I started out working on a show called Shikabane Hime last year. Uh, but for various reasons, I did not stay with that project, and I think I did only the first four episodes of that. Yes, yeah, Shikabane Hime. So, um, and right now, my, my guy, Chris Bevins, as I said, who has been my line producer, uh, is not functioning in that uh, capacity anymore at Funimation. So I've let uh, some of the other producers know that I'm interested in, and available to do other directing work, and I hope it'll come back around again. I really like it. Uh, uh, for one reason, it, it, uh, it, it by the hour it doesn't pay quite as well as as voice acting, but it's also a little steadier because you're uh, you're on a you know like a four hour a day schedule five days a week for maybe five or six weeks, and uh, the voice work tends to be 
you know, I'm, if I'm lucky, like I, this week has been a pretty good week. I've just finished my third session of the week uh, a couple of hours ago. And these days, that's, that's probably a fairly heavy load for me. Uh, that, that's about the most that I do. It's, it's fairly uncommon to go more than a week without at least one session. Uh, maybe one or two has been, uh, has been common lately. But it's, it's very cyclical. It's uh, cyclical, excuse me. It's, it's very up and down. Uh, if I'm a major character in a show, I might have, uh, you know, a four or five hour session in one day just working on one show. Uh, and if I'm, if I'm just doing a minor character in a show, it might be just, you know, an hour's worth of work and they'll, uh, they'll find me another hour's worth of work on another show. I have a, I have a two hour minimum as a number of us Dallas actors and Fort Worth actors do, I, I think simply because, uh, it's a fairly good drive out to a flower mound, which is where Funimation is located. And they they try to give those of us who have to drive a, a, a pretty fair distance uh, at least a couple of hours worth of work each time, for, for which I am very grateful. That's understandable, and it, it's nice that they work with you on that, too. <laughs> yes, indeed. And now I'm curious, um, I've heard a lot of voice actors say that, you know, voice acting is a lot more difficult than other acting, but they don't get paid as much. Would you agree with that? Well, um, y- yes and no. Um, by the hour, it actually pays pretty well. Um, if I'm in a play, I might make in a in a say a five or six hour day at Funimation. Like if I've got a five or six hours worth of session work in one day. That's going to pay me about what I'm going to make for a whole week doing theater. So by the hour, it's it's a better deal. Um, I would have to say that the, the stage is still my first love and is my first interest. But uh, I've certainly been uh, uh, really enjoyed my uh, my anime career, I guess you could call it that, uh, in the last several years, especially since. As I've done more and more work, uh, it seems like my name has gotten out there more and more, and I I hear from people that uh, um, you know want to be friends, and uh, <laughs> uh, I've I've only been to one anime convention that was a couple of years ago in uh, North Carolina, but uh, the uh, the director of that con was a particular fan of Case Closed, which was my first series at uh, Funimation and my my first. First big role, actually, probably the biggest role I've, I've ever had. We did about 130 episodes of that show. Um, so, you know, they, they both have a lot to recommend them. One, one thing I always say jokingly about being a voice actor is you don't have to look your best. You know, if I'm going for a film audition or a TV audition, which I do from time to time in Dallas or occasionally down in Austin, you know, you got to dress up, you got to look the part, you got to shave, you got to look nice. Uh, it's Funimation. It's a little more casual than that. Uh, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to shave, and I often don't. And that's a secret. Now we mustn't tell anybody about that. Well, just well, the people it, listening. If it makes you feel <laughs> yeah. better, uh, since I can just do this in my room, not not a fancy studio, I can uh, roll out of bed and not even have to worry about how my hair. Oh, looks. fabulous! <laughs> yeah, I do have to go to the studio. There is that. Yeah. But I will say that we're going to take a very short break here on 91.8 The Fan, so keep it tuned to your favorite station. Everything you want, nothing you don't. Attention everyone. This is the Neighborhood Watch Committee reminding everyone the best place to go for all your video gaming needs, Game Tag Stores. Unlike certain other video gaming stores, Game Tag is run by gamers just like you, and they're always willing to give you a helping hand. Remember, if your game store has the word stop in it, it should tell you what you should be doing before you even set foot into their store. Thank you, and have a safe day. Hey, everybody, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. This is Kanda. You're still in my corner, and I'm still with my special guest. I haven't bored him to tears. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. You're doing great. Nope. <laughs> And I, we were actually talking uh, during the break about how, you know, you said you had to remind yourself uh, that for a lot of people, anime is, is serious business. Well, yeah, I mean, not that I don't take it seriously or take my, my work seriously, I do. But, but frankly, it's, it's so much fun uh, that it, it's hard to think of it as work. And oftentimes it's so silly 
uh, and particularly with some of the some of the kind of silly shows or the really comic shows, you know, we we go in and 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 it's me in the booth and the director and the engineer out on the other side of the glass and we'll uh, we laugh, you know, we laugh an awful lot and have a great time. Uh, and uh, you know, sometimes we can we voice actors can be kind of flip uh, with each other about you know what it is we do and that sort of thing. And, and as I yes, as I was saying to you during the break, we kind of have to remind ourselves every once in a while that the, there's an awful lot of people that take this very, very, very seriously, what we do. And, and I don't want to suggest that that uh, that I make fun of what I do ever, but every once in a while, you know, you get a, you get a script, for instance, with a, with a particularly clumsy, clumsily written line or, uh, or a line that didn't fit the flaps very well, and we might make some sort of, you know, snide offhand comment about... You know, the writer or, or the original story or you know that sort of thing but um, uh, but overall I got to say you know it, it's something that I really really like and really really enjoy uh, exactly and that's uh, what's important you know if you if you're not having fun at your job then there's no reason to do the job I, at least I would think well I, for me anyway that's certainly been the case um, you know, I've I've thought of myself as an actor for an awfully long time now, uh, and and I and I think in, in some ways it was always the path of least resistance for me. It was something that I was pretty good at when I was young, and something that I enjoyed, and something that I uh, got praise for, and uh, got you know good parts and good shows, and from high school and college on, I uh, became a became a professional about. Six years out of college, I guess, and I've been, a, as I say, I've been a member of Actors Equity for quite some time now. Um, so, yeah, it is something. I do what I love. Uh, I sure haven't gotten rich off of it. Uh, I've had some years better than others, uh, but for the most part, you know, there will be no, you know, there will be no Swiss chalets in my future. Uh, <laughs> you know, no, no, uh, no sixty-foot yachts, anything like that. Uh, and there are certainly months when I have, when I have all I can do just to meet my bills. Uh, that's sort of the real life of an actor. Uh, but mostly, I've been able to, you know, to keep my head above water as an actor. And uh, and thank goodness for uh, for uh, anime, for Funimation in particular in that case because it's really a, it's done more than supplement my uh, my stage uh, and income certainly in the last decade. Well, that's definitely good news, considering you know the economy hasn't been where everybody wants it to be. So it's 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 a good thing that you know you're keeping your head above water. Yeah, as I say, well, sometimes you know, sometimes the water's lapping just under my nose, but mostly I'm able to breathe fairly <laughs> normally and regularly. And, and have you seen the effects of the economy at all? Not maybe not personally, but uh, through you know the the industry. Um. Kind of a tough one too. I'm I'm not sure I have. Uh, as I say, the, the my work at Funimation seems to be kind of cyclical, and I'm not sure I could put, you know, a regular, you know, like three month cycle or six month cycle, or anything like that. It just kind of depends on on what shows they're working on right now and what roles there are. Um, uh, you know, how much work there is for me. It kind of depends. Uh, I've been working there long enough now, and I've and I've worked now with all of the the directors at Funimation, uh, and there are a number of them, and I've worked with them all now at at, at enough length that uh, that I think they're they realize uh, that I'm a fairly versatile uh, actor, um, and uh, and fairly easy to get along with, and I really uh, always enjoy the company when I'm hanging out with my. Funimation pals. There's some awfully good folks that work there and do good work consistently every day, and I really enjoy I enjoy being part of that, and I take pride in being part of that. Now, I obviously want to know, and I'm sure our listeners want to know: Are there any projects that recently came out that you want to plug, or anything that you have coming out that you can talk about? Well, uh, let's see. Um, actually, the thing the thing today I can't talk about, and I don't. 
I don't know that it's a huge deal, but it's it's something for which the cast has not been formally announced. Uh, so I can't I can't talk about what I did today. Um, uh, I could tell you that on Tuesday when I was at Funimation, I did uh, something that's fairly out of the ordinary there, which was to uh, do voice dubbing on a live action film. And oh. uh, that's that's always a, a kind of a fun change to do. Um, they do every once in a while, maybe, probably not even once a year for the last eight years. Uh, they'll do a a, a live action film um, that uh, that for one reason or another it needs to have a, a, an English dub done of it. And I've done a French horror film and a and a Thai uh, kind of kung fu movie. Uh, the one I was working on the other day was actually a Russian war film uh, that uh, was an award winner in Russia, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago. Uh, and somebody had bought the rights to it and was getting Funimation to, uh, to put together a, 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 a dub for it, an English dub version. So that's always kind of fun, you know, playing real people on the screen in front of you instead of drawn people. That's actually really interesting because I didn't know they ever dubbed live action, so shame on me. <laughs> well, uh, no shame involved. I, as I say, it's not, it's not very often. Uh, you know, 99% of, of what we do is, is, uh, is anime. But like, every once in a while, you know, we, just, we get a live action in and I've, I played an old emperor in something, and oh, I played. Uh, the, let's see, we did a, a, a really beautiful Japanese film called Love and Honor about a blind uh, samurai uh, that I believe was an award winner in Japan, and I played his old servant, uh, and that was quite a lovely film. I was uh, very, very pleased to be part of that. That's very interesting. And the, uh, yeah, and the, and the French and the French horror film I did, I might mention, is called Malefique, uh, M-A-L-E-F-I-Q-U-E, and it also I think was an award winner at a, at a couple of horror film festivals in Europe. Uh, very very interesting and unusual uh, live action with with four guys in a cell uh, in prison in France who find this magical book hidden behind the wall that they think can get them out of prison and all sorts of kind of horrible and gruesome and strange things happen. Pretty good movie. That Pretty sounds cool. right up my alley, actually, because I love yeah. horror films. So now I need to check that out. <laughs> yeah, Malefique. Pretty cool. Pretty cool movie. And is there anything else that you'd like to tell our listeners about? Well, gosh. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I sure have been in an awful lot of shows. Um, I might mention I, 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 I'm in some regular movies, you know, mostly small parts. I had a small part in JFK, which uh, your listeners will at least be familiar with. Got to work for Oliver Stone for a couple of days. And uh, I'm in a, several other movies. You can look me up on IMDb. I'm in about seven or eight movies. I got to work with uh, Robert Altman, great director Robert Altman, in a small part in the uh, uh, Dr. T and the Women, which they filmed here in Dallas uh, several years ago before he died. I've been lucky in that my first feature film was when I was in New York. I have a small part as a computer technician in Fletch Lives and had a very quick scene with the Chevy Chase in that movie. And oh, very nice. I, that's when I was living in New York, which I was there from uh, 85 to 90 and moved back to Dallas uh, in 90 and just in time for a an awful lot of movies that came in. JFK was one of the first auditions that I had when I got back to Dallas and wound up with a part in that. I actually, I had a swell scene with Clint Eastwood in A Perfect World, uh, which unfortunately, unfortunately was cut out of, uh, was part of a larger sequence that was all cut out of the final finished film. So I didn't make it into the final film, but I got, I got a picture of me and Clint standing together I had a scene with him that just didn't make the didn't make the final edit. I'm afraid. You can still brag about it, though. <laughs> but I can still say, yeah, I did a scene with Clint Eastwood, <laughs> and I was on Barney and Friends. I've done a couple of Barney and Friends, which, as you probably know, uh, shoots here in Dallas, and has 
since uh, since its beginning. I was Mr. Ten again on an episode of Barney back in the 90s, and I played a kid's grandpa uh, about four or five years ago on a more recent Barney. So I don't Very know whether cool. that that probably doesn't give me any anime cred. <laughs> but to, to admit probably that not I was so much. On Barney. <laughs> But the purple purple dinosaur was very nice to me. But I, I am curious if you'd be willing, before we let you go, to participate in a 91.8 The Fan Tradition. And that is? We ask everybody who comes on, whether they're a voice actor or not, if they'd be willing to do a bump for us. A bump? Oh, sure. Awesome. I'd and we do delighted. this live on air for uh, any mess-ups, just to put the pressure on you. <laughs> and what but, would you like me to say? Basically, we were wondering if you could say and fill in the blanks, my name is, I do this, and you're tuned into 91.8 The Fan. Okay, I can sure do that. Whenever you're ready. My name is R. Bruce Elliott, and I am an anime voice actor, and you are tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. Perfect. No bloopers or anything. No pressure on you. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, though, it was an absolute pleasure to have you on the show, and thank you so much. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much for asking me. I'm delighted to, delighted to get to do that. And for everybody out there, if you missed any of this interview, you can catch it on the website in the next few days, so keep it tuned to your favorite station, 91.8 The Fan. Here's Girls Dead Monster and their song, Rains.